For what feels like five years now, Victor Wembanyama has been projected to be the first overall pick in the 2023 NBA Draft. In fact, they might as well have just announced the Spurs draft pick the moment they won the draft lottery. Victor is the highest ceiling prospect I've ever evaluated, and he's tied for the highest graded prospect I've ever evaluated with Luka Doncic. He's a unicorn in every sense of the word. He's generational in every sense of the word. Both of those terms get thrown around a lot these days to the point where they don't really mean anything, but when you're talking about Victor, there's no other way to describe him. He is generational. We truly have never seen anything like this, and it's intriguing and terrifying to think about just how good of an NBA player he could be. But how does he stack up compared to other first overall picks in recent memory? How does he compare to those guys as prospects, and how does he project to be in the NBA compared to those guys? Anthony Davis is the best of these players I'll be talking about, which makes the fact that he's also the best of these prospects fitting as well. Now, I don't include Anthony Davis in my best prospects I've evaluated list, because I didn't evaluate Anthony Davis as a prospect in real time. I started evaluating prospects in 2016, but I have gone back and watched prospect Anthony Davis, and he would rank super high if I did evaluate him in real time. Probably would be number 3 ahead of Zion and right behind Victor and Luka. AD was an absurd prospect. He averaged nearly 5 blocks per game, stood as 2 fouls per game across 40 games as an 18 year old at Kentucky. And in the SEC, across 16 games, he averaged 4.9 blocks per game to just 1.6 fouls per game. 14 points per game and 10 rebounds per game are good numbers, but they don't stand out, and they also don't reflect just how good he was at 18 years old in college. Those numbers speak more to the system at Kentucky than anything. He was the best player in college basketball and one of the best defensive prospects of all time. Victor is a better prospect than Anthony Davis, but that speaks more to how absurd Victor is than it does Anthony Davis as a prospect because Anthony Davis in his own right was an absurd prospect. I also think Victor has higher upside than Anthony Davis in terms of what Anthony Davis has been in the league, but I think it's closer than some would believe. Anthony Davis is a future first ballot Hall of Famer. He's arguably the best player on that 2020 Lakers team that won the title. He's one of the best defensive players of his generation, one of the best players to never win a defensive player of the year as of right now, and at his peak, he was arguably one of the three best players in basketball. So no, I don't think it would be disappointing if Victor had a career that mirrors what Anthony Davis has been in the NBA, because that's still a first ballot Hall of Famer, multi-time All-Star, multi-time All-Defense, MVP candidate, arguably should have won a defensive player of the year, and an NBA champion as arguably the best player on that team, even if he didn't win finals MVP. But the fact that Victor has a ceiling that's even higher than what AD has been speaks to how much upside Victor has as a prospect. We don't have to spend too much time with Anthony Bennett. Victor could average more points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, steals per game, and blocks per game as a rookie than if you combined every season of Anthony Bennett's NBA career. That's a very real possibility. Bennett was a terrible pick at the time, nobody saw it coming, and it's proven to be a terrible pick with time as well. Victor is a significantly better prospect than Bennett was, that goes without question, and I'm guaranteeing that he will be a significantly better NBA player. It won't take much for anyone in the NBA to be significantly better than Anthony Bennett was, and if Victor isn't better than Anthony Bennett in the NBA, I'm saying it right now, he will be the biggest draft bust of all time. I made a whole video about this, but the perception around prospect Wiggins is a bit false and there's a bit of revisionist history and what people view it, and I also think it's a bit of people mixing up what went on in high school versus what we saw in college. He wasn't this generational prospect. The next LeBron talk with him really died once he started playing Kansas. In fact, if you actually watch the Kansas tape, it's very clear, even without hindsight, that Embiid was a better prospect, and Embiid would have been the first overall pick if it wasn't for injuries. 
Wiggins was still a very good prospect. The biggest athleticism and scoring potential were evident on tape, but also the inconsistencies, you know, kind of floating and not always showing up on tape was there as well. That was just as evident to me. But he wasn't quite what people remember him as a prospect. That's the point I'm trying to make. Victor is a much better prospect than Wiggins was. And while Wiggins has turned it around and had a season where he was the second best player on a team that won the NBA title, I do think that Victor projects to be a better pro. Cat is somewhat similar to AD where the numbers don't fully reflect just how good he was. He played in that Kentucky system and only averaged 10 points per game and I do think those numbers would have been a lot better in a different system. But he was and still is very skilled, was actually a pretty good defensive prospect, that was a real selling point with him at Kentucky, and was worthy of the first overall pick. With that being said, Victor is a better prospect. And I do think Cat has been a good NBA player, even if I have questions about how he impacts winning basketball, he is statistically the best 3 point shooting big man ever, he is one of the most skilled perimeter creating bigs ever. Even if he regresses in the playoffs, you can't take away from either of those things. But I think Victor projects to be a better player. He can be an even better offensive player, a better passer, and a significantly better defender that impacts winning basketball more. The perception around Ben Simmons has taken a massive hit after this season, and for good reason. He was bad, but Ben Simmons' disappointing NBA career really speaks to how good of a prospect he was. A guy with an all-star, all-NBA, and all-defense selection under his belt being viewed as disappointing really tells me something. It tells me this was one of the more talented prospects we've ever seen. And Ben Simmons was an absurd prospect. He was a dominant scorer despite not being a good suitor. It's weird to say now, but he was taking over games as a physical monster in high school and college, and he was also an elite playmaker. And in the NBA, he has found success. But he's so talented that a career 15-7-7 stat line and an all-star, all-NBA, all-defense resume is justifiably viewed as disappointing. I think from a pure talent perspective, it's closer between Simmons and Victor than you would think. But I lean towards Victor being a better prospect and projecting to be a better player in the NBA than Ben Simmons has been. Markel Fultz is a case of injuries really getting in the way of your development. He had some of the best tape I've seen from a guard. He's one of the best guard prospects I've ever evaluated. He could pass, shoot, dribble, athletic, create for himself and others, all of it. However, a nerve injury prior to his rookie season really stunted his early development. But the fact he's bounced back is a testament to his hard work and talent. He's been pretty good with Orlando. He just had the best season of his NBA career at 24 years old, averaging around 14 points per game, 4 rebounds per game, and 6 assists per game on 51 field goal percentage. He's showing the signs of the player he was prior to those injuries, and I think without injuries, he's easily an all-NBA level guard in this league, and he's averaging like 25, 5, and 5 in his sleep. That's how good he could have been, and he might get back to that. I don't know if he will, but I do think he's proving he can still be a starting level guard in this league, and has had a redemption arc worth rooting for it. With that being said, Victor is a better prospect than Fultz was, and I think he projects to be a better pro than Fultz has been, even if Fultz has had a bounce back career after a rough start. DeAndre Aiden is the most frustrating player in the league for me, because as a prospect, he looked like the future best big in the league. All the physical tools in the world, a monster frame, incredible vertical athleticism, fluid movement skills, dominant strength, absurd skills, and the potential to be dominant on both ends of the floor. It's like if Optimus Prime was an elite big man prospect, and the fact that you can justifiably look at his NBA career, where he's a near 17 point per game, 10 rebound per game, 60 focal percentage career NBA player, a top 3 option on a title contender, and one of the most important players in a conference final series, if not the most important player in a conference final series, and believe he's not even close to as good as he should be, is telling of how talented of a player he is. Aiden is one of the best big prospects I've ever evaluated. He was built in a lab to play center in the NBA, and he's putting up around 18 points per game and 10 rebounds per game on 60 field goal percentage in his sleep. 
but he lacks the aggressive and screwing mindset to reach his full potential, and he always leaves you wanting to see more from him. Victor may not have the physical tools from a strength perspective that Aiton had entering the league, but he's more skilled and is wired to be more aggressive as an offensive player and also projects to be a better defensive player as well, which is why I really believe that maybe Victor is kind of what we thought Aiton could be and even more than that. And I think that Victor projects to be a more dominant player in the NBA, which really says something because Aiden projected to be a super dominant player entering the league. We are going to talk about Zion Williamson strictly on the court, and only on the court, where he was one of the best prospects I've ever evaluated. In fact, I evaluated him as my third best prospect that I've seen since 2016, and that also means he's the third best prospect I've evaluated in real time. He ranks third behind Victor and Luca. He had dominant physical traits, traits and tools we just haven't seen, freakish athleticism combined with absurd skill. Skill is what made Zion a special talent. A high field player, good handle, incredible footwork, great passer, good in the post, unreal touch around the basket, high motor on the glass, Combine that with those unteachable physical tools and tangibles, and you get one of the best prospects in recent memory. Victor in his own right has unteachable physical traits and tangibles. In a way, he's the inverse of Zion in terms of height versus strength perspective when it comes to traits and intangibles. Combined with that unreal skill and feel. I do think that Victor is a better prospect than Zion was because he's even more skilled as an offensive player and a better defensive prospect. Now when it comes to the NBA, it's more interesting because if we aren't factoring in health, I can't say with a straight face that Victor without a doubt projects to be a better player than a healthy Zion Williamson because healthy Zion Williamson is arguably the most dominant offensive player in the NBA and has been one of those guys we look at his early career and say, but when he's healthy, he's easily one of the most dominant players for his age. He's the most dominant offensive 19-year-old prospect I've seen. He was dominant at 20. He was dominant at 22. So it's hard to say that Victor could be that because Zion, when healthy as own, he has best in the world potential as well. But because health is arguably the biggest factor with Zion, I do think it's close between those two, but I would lean Victor long term. Victor's going to have to prove he can be what Zion has been in terms of production and impact when he enters the NBA, but I do think the upside is a bit higher with Victor, and part of that is the health with Zion. And part of that is how good Victor is. Anthony Edwards is a case of massive improvement since entering the NBA because his tape as a prospect is actually pretty rough. He had all the tools you see now, but he settled for jumpers way too much. And he's the most inconsistent first overall pick I've evaluated on tape. He had the worst odd selection I've seen from a first overall pick. He wasn't even number one on my board. Lamelo was a better prospect, and even though Anthony Edwards has been the better NBA player, I do think, and I will stand by the fact that Lamelo was a better prospect entering the league. But in the NBA, Anthony Edwards has done nothing but improvement. His progression in terms of production and efficiency is linear from season to season. His shot selection is getting better. He's becoming more dominant as a scorer. He's improved as a passer every year. He's won his way to claim the title of best shooting guard in the world and is going to have a claim for best scorer in the league very soon. With that being said, Victor is a much better prospect than Anthony Edwards was and I do think Victor projects to be a better NBA player, which is no slight at Ant. Ant has the potential to be a top 10 player in the NBA and a perennial all-NBA guy. But I just think Victor has a ceiling to be even more than a top 10 player in the NBA. Cade Cunningham is one of the 5 best prospects I've ever evaluated in real time. He had a great frame for a point guard, at 6'7", 220 pounds with a 7 foot wingspan. 
He had primary initiator intangibles, unreal feel for the game, one of the best playmakers I've ever evaluated. He had positional versatility and role versatility. He could be a PNR playmaker, he could play off ball, he could be a facilitator, he could be a high low scoring forward in a Jason Tatum role. He is just so the signs of everything you want in the first overall pick. And he's dealt with injuries that have cost him most of his second NBA season. But when he's been healthy, he's looked pretty good. And I do think he's the Pistons franchise player moving forward. But Victor is a better prospect on both ends of the floor in my opinion. And while I do think Cade could be an all-NBA level player in the future, Victor does have a higher ceiling as well. And Paulo Bancaro, the last player we'll be talking about, was the no-brainer number one guy on my board for the 2022 NBA Draft from the start of the cycle to the end of the cycle. The size, the physicality, the skill, the feel through the game, he really could do it all. He was an elite scoring prospect that showed signs of being able to score on all three levels. He was arguably the best playmaking prospect in the draft, and he had an incredible rookie season. He averaged 20 points a game as a rookie, which is no easy feat. In fact, he's the only player I've talked about in this video that has averaged 20 points a game as a rookie. And I think Victor could be even better. Now, it's a bit more interesting, and part this is because I'm higher on Paulo than a lot of people are. But I think Paulo is a bit more polished in terms of slashing, passing, and post play. But I think Victor projects to be a bit better of a suitor and creator and could be even more dominant just because he's 7 for 5 and can do anything on a basketball court. And the defense is what takes Victor like, clearly over Paulo. Paulo can be a good defender, but he has his lapses. Victor is the best defensive prospect I've ever evaluated. I think it's going to be close between those two offensively. And I think both of those guys have like best scorer in the league kind of potential. But the fact that Victor is a better defensive player already than Paulo is really puts him over the top. But that's the end of this video. If you made to this point, thank you so much. Again, haven't already liked, subscribe, hit notification bell, notified whenever we say video. I make videos about basketball all the time, so if that interests you, really think you enjoy this channel. And liking, subscribing are the two best ways can help me out in the YouTube algorithm. Help your people find my videos, so in turn, help the channel grow so I can make more content for you guys in the future consistently. Let's try to get 100 likes on this video so YouTube will recommend it to others. Let me know what you think about these guys and how their NBA careers have gone. And also Victor Wimbanyama in the comment section below. With that being said, have a nice day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.